Welcome back guys to Tempe Creek where we talk about our winery, vineyard, and small farm operations. If you're into any of that sort of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future videos um, covering those topics. Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about corks, your last line of defense to keeping your wine fresh. Um, we're not going to be talking about all the corks, we're basically talking about the ones that we've used and where we are and what they're, which ones are good for what circumstance. Not everything is just a buy one fits all sort of situation. Um, if that were the case, I think we'd only have one sort of cork around. Um, but we're, I'm going to tell you like how, I'll tell you about our cork journey and where we are. Where, and when, and I'm gonna tell you about our cork journey and where we're at right now and our experiences with the three different types of corks um, that we use. So, to start us off, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the first one that we used here at the winery. It was called an agglomerated uh, cork. And basically, that guy looks something like that. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be your cheapest cork. Uh, obviously, when we were just starting off, we were trying to save money because we hadn't didn't have any money coming in. Um, and so we ended up using these corks on a couple of different vents that we had. I will say that overall, the experience isn't that great. Uh, they are cheap corks. They don't have a good uh, shelf life in terms of keeping the wine fresh over long periods of time. Um, <clears throat> they also tend to like, you sometimes can get like cork taint um, from, uh, from these. At least in our experience, we had some bottles that, it wasn't the whole batch, but some bottles that got cork taint uh, from it. Um, another th issue that we have with this uh, cork is that when you do finally do go to open up the bottle, it was very crumbly, which is, ends up being a really bad experience for the consumer. Um, even if the consumer is you, ultimately, it just kind of sucks if you have bits of cork that kind of get stuck in there. <clears throat> and you can see this is actually one of our older vents, but you could see how um, the the wine starting to penetrate the actual cork. See, it's starting to actually penetrate through the cork, and so that's not like preferred. Um, <clears throat> but on the flip side, I'm gonna tell you why this is actually pretty good. It is kind of a cheap cork. Um, however, it is an easy cork to cork. Cork, cork, cork? Um, it's easy to cork these corks, all right? Uh, the reason is, it's just a softer material, but if you're using a hand cork, especially like the double lever ones where you're like pressing down or whatever, this is what you wanna use. It's easy, you can do lots of bottles with this. You're not gonna tire yourself out. You're not gonna just like, it's not gonna be a horrible experience. Um, but obviously, if you use these corks, um, you probably want to drink your wine at the latest within 18 months. Uh, maybe like around that year mark, basically try to get through it. All right, <clears throat> the next one I want to talk about, guys, is the culminated uh, corks. These are pretty good in my opinion. Um, they're actually the most popular, um, especially for like non-professionals. I'll give you this close up. Boom, and boom. Um, <clears throat> these are the ones you, uh, to most people end up buying like off of Amazon and the like. Uh, they're pretty good, um, especially if you do not have a professional corker. Like if you're still hand bottling, like we are, and we might not be soon, but we are currently still are, as of this moment, hand bottling. Um, these are pretty good. It's a pretty tight fit. It's a lot tighter fit than the agglomerated. Um, <clears throat> it holds a lot better. You can see it hasn't seeped through uh, as much as the other one, um, <clears throat> as, as much as the agglomerated. Um, there's a, they're a little bit more expensive, but they're definitely worth it. Um, 
tougher to get into, but still super manageable. Even after, especially after you like learn your technique with uh, corking, um, if you have the, the the standing corker, you'll be able to do it pretty easily. There's enough leverage there where you're able to do it. The double lever corker where you're just pulling it is going to be a little bit more difficult um, for you. Um, but overall, I would say that this is a good starting point um, for most people is using this. The price difference between the two other ones is like negligible um, in my opinion and so I would go with this cork. <clears throat> I will say like if you're doing a lot of these, these do get tough um, over time so if you're doing like hundreds, you'll probably get more yourself out more with this than you do with the agglomerated. Um, and then we recently moved to, we graduated, maybe not, maybe we're just trying to act like the big boys. Um, but we have a actual natural cork um, here. We even got them uh, printed on. Boom, that guy. The natural corks, they're nicer. They hold in a lot better or slightly better than the uh, colmated for sure. Um, <clears throat> the, and they're a little bit pricier but they're, they're better. The issue is, if you are hand bottling these, these uh, corks, it is extremely difficult. Um, a lot of times when I end up bottling with the natural corks, I have a separate box for mess up corks where I just mess up, and, but I'm just in the rhythm, I just wanna keep going, and I'll just like put them to the side and be like, these are now tasting bottles uh, <clears throat> because I just don't want to recork them. Um, they get tiring, uh, and so that is the bad part if you are uh, hand corking. Natural corks are just, they're a better product. They're gonna probably uh, be better for your wine, but they're gonna be a lot harder on you, and you're probably gonna mess up. Um, and so like price-wise, it's probably in, jack it up because you're, you're gonna have a lot more mess ups. Um, but, 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 we recently uh, got a air compressor um, corker, a brand new one, we haven't used it yet. We're just about a, cork, we're about a bottle here pretty soon and so we're, I'm just about to start it off. I'm really excited to show you guys that video. It was like, for being a corker, it was affordable. I mean, it was still a decent amount of money but we'll get into that in another video. Um, but basically guys, that's my opinion on these three types of corks that are used pretty frequently in uh, winemaking. Um, we have the agglomerated, uh, which is softer, easier to put in. The colmated, which is a good all-arounder. Um, and then the natural cork. A lot, a lot better, super hard to cork if you are hand bottling. <clears throat> um, stay tuned, soon we will probably have a monthly uh, live stream where we can talk. You guys can ask me any questions you want about how our process or maybe how we're doing or the hardest part about starting this venture. Um, anything you want, we'll probably end up shooting for the, the end of the month or the beginning of the month. Uh, um, and so be on the lookout for that live stream guys. All right, Tempe Creek, check you later. Maybe Tempe Creek out, Tempe Creek out. I didn't even work on an ending. <laughs>